have you ever wondered what influences children to turn out the way they do? What affects their ability to form meaningful, satisfying relationships with those around them? What factors contribute to their experiences of anxiety, avoidance, and fulfillment when it comes to relationships? Have you ever wondered? Well, it all goes back to a child's early experiences with their parents, caregivers, or the environment they grew up in. They all have a profound impact on one's relationship skills as adults. Much of the knowledge I have on this subject today comes from a concept developed in the 1950s by a psychologist called John Bowlby. He researched the effects of separation between infants and their parents. Now, as a mother and therapist who works with children, I know the importance of positive and secure attachment in child development. I want to outline what this means in real life so that you can apply it to your relationship with your child. In today's video, I'll explain what attachment is, the types, characteristics, why it's important, and how you as a parent can support a secure attachment with your child. So John Bowlby described attachment as a lasting psychological connectedness between human beings. But in simpler terms, attachment refers to the particular way in which you relate to other people. Your style of attachment was formed at the very beginning of your life, during the first two years. Now, once established, it is a style that stays with you and plays out today in how you relate in intimate relationships and how you parent your children. In short, the central theme of attachment theory is that primary caregivers who are available and responsive to an infant's needs allow the child to develop a sense of security. The infant learns that the caregiver is dependable, which creates a secure base for the child to then explore the world. And the reverse is true. Disruption too, or loss of this bond can affect a child emotionally and psychologically into adulthood, and it can have an impact on their future relationships. Attachment theory helps you understand how early childhood experiences impact our behaviors as adults. Now, there are four characteristics of attachment that basically give us a clear view of what attachment really is. They include safe haven, a secure base, proximity maintenance, and separation distress. So these four attributes are very evident in the relationship between a child and his caregiver. Number one, let's talk about safe haven. Ideally, the child can rely on his caregiver for comfort at times when he feels threatened, frightened, or in danger. For example, if a child is given a toy that he doesn't like, he would cry, right? And his mother would remove the toy, hug the child, so he'd stop crying. Number two, secure base. Here, the caregiver gives a good, reliable foundation to the child as he goes on learning and sorting out things by himself. For example, a child would ask questions to his mother about why his dad got sick and can't play with him at the moment. You're creating a secure base. Number three, proximity maintenance. This means that the child aims to explore the world, but still tries to stay close to his caregiver. Uh, another example is a teenager will discuss peer problems with his mother. Yes, they're growing up, but they can still come back to you to ask questions, right? That's proximity maintenance. Number four, we have the separation distress. This means that the child becomes unhappy and sorrowful when he or she becomes separated from his or her caregiver. An example. An infant will cry loudly when his mother or father leaves for work. That's a separation distress. Now, let's talk about the four types of attachment theory. Let's see where you fall or where you think your child falls right now. Number one is the secure attachment. Now, ideally, from the time infants are six months old to two years of age, they form an emotional attachment to an adult who is attuned to them. That is, uh, the adult who is sensitive and responsive in their interactions with them. I need you to think for a moment. Are you that adult to your child? Was your caregiver that adult to you? It is vital that the attachment figure remains consistent in caregiving 
throughout this period in a child's life. That is from six months to two years of age. During the second year, children begin to use the adult as a secure base from which to explore the world and become more independent. A child in this type of relationship is securely attached. Let me explain. In order for a child to feel securely attached to their parents or caregivers, the child must feel seen, heard, and soothed when they're in distress. Again, are you that kind of caregiver? Do you see, soothe, and hear your child? Do you nurture them? Or were your parents that kind of caregivers who saw you, who heard you, and soothed you? The second type of attachment is avoidant attachment style. Now, avoidant attachment develops when an infant or young child has a parent or caregiver who is consistently emotionally unavailable or unresponsive to their needs. I will repeat, consistently unavailable and unresponsive to the child's needs. Infants with um, an avoidant attachment style may also have first repeated discouragement from crying or expressing outward emotion. You've had your parents who will tell you, so why are you crying? Be a man. Man up. Boys don't cry. Big girls don't cry. You are going to create an avoidant attachment in a child like that. There are adults who are emotionally unavailable, and as a result, they are insensitive to or unaware of the needs of their children. They have little or no response when a child is hurting or distressed. These parents will discourage crying and encourage independence. Grow up. Why are you crying? Often, their children quickly develop into little adults who take care of themselves. These children pull away from needing anything from anyone else and they become self-contained. They have formed an avoidant attachment with a misattuned parent. I hear so many people would say, my child is only three years old, but hey, mashallah, he's independent. Why would you be glad that a three-year-old is independent? She or he still needs you at that age, emotionally, psychologically, physically. Let's talk about the causes of an avoidant attachment. If your physical needs like hunger, safety, or touch were not met, you will develop an avoidant attachment. If they didn't meet your emotional needs like providing compassion, affection, or respected your boundaries, you will develop an avoidant attachment. If they didn't show empathy, when parenting and they discouraged you from expressing emotions like sadness or anger you will develop an avoidant attachment it's a good time to ask yourself are you the kind of parent who consistently is unresponsive to your child's needs and discourage them from being sad or angry or frustrated number three we have the anxious attachment style. That's the third type, or the ambivalent. Now, some adults are inconsistently, inconsistently attuned to their children. At times, their responses are appropriate and nurturing. Oh, hi, baby, huggies, kisses, cuddles. But at other times, they are intrusive and insensitive. Like, you don't want to know, like, ah, ah, leave me alone. See, children with this kind of parenting are confused and insecure, not knowing what type of treatment to expect. They feel often suspicious and distrustful of their parents, but at the same time, they act clingy and desperate. These children have an ambivalent or anxious attachment with their unpredictable parent. This is why they become confused and anxious, because one minute, you do show them love, and then the other minute, you don't want to know. So that is where the confusion comes from. So you will notice that they will start to, you know, try to get your attention, sometimes from a negative way, because they crave or miss the other time or moment when you showed them love. That is what makes them anxiously attached. The fourth type of attachment is disorganized attachment. Now, when a parent or caregiver is abusive to a child, the child experiences physical and emotional cruelty and frightening behavior as being life-threatening. This child is caught in a terrible dilemma. Hear this. Her survival instincts are telling her to flee to safety. You know, when she's scared or frightened, she wants to flee to safety. But guess what? Safety is the very person 
who is terrifying her. The attachment figure is the source of the child's distress. In these situations, children typically de-associate from themselves. They detach from what is happening to them and what they are experiencing is blocked from their consciousness. Children in this conflicted state have disorganized attachment with their fearsome parental figures. Disorganized attachment develops from a parent's consistent failure to respond appropriately to their child's distress or by a parent's inconsistent response to their child's feelings of fear or distress. I'll give you an example. A child might be distressed to be left with a new babysitter or unfamiliar caregiver. Instead of you soothing the child or providing support, the parent will yell at the child or attempt to use fear or intimidation in an effort to get them to stop crying. Alternatively, the parent might speak reassuringly but avoid physical contact or true connection. In another example, the child might be afraid of being left alone in bed at night. They might cry out for the parent. You know, you've, you've heard them. They're fussy. They're crying. Oh, mommy, daddy. And while the parent might sometimes respond with kindness and support, they might at other times ignore their cries for long periods of time or never respond at all. They might respond by yelling or mocking the child's fears. Now, let me explain to you why attachment is very important in childhood development, okay? Through attachment, this early picture of relationship can be critical in establishing a mental foundation that child will use to interact with other people and will dictate the way they feel about themselves. Now, this can impact three key areas. A child's sense of self, a child's sense of others, and a child's relationship with him or herself and other people around them. And contrary to what the name suggests, attachment can actually help children increase their independence as a result of possessing confidence in themselves and their caregivers. Attachment essentially can establish a positive or negative path for childhood development that will impact the way children form bonds and interact with other people into adulthood. Attachment is critical in childhood development and unfortunately, not all children receive equal opportunities for successful attachments. As children do not receive equal opportunities for successful attachments, there are many children who simply aren't raised in environments where a concentrated bond with a caregiver can form. A few effects of successful attachment. I need you to pay attention, okay? Children with secure attachments are often best equipped to form similar strong attachments in adulthood as they have experienced early on the ability to form a trusting bond and generally feel comfortable that their needs will be met, okay? An attachment in infancy means increased interaction and engagement, which has been linked to improved early communication. Secure attachment also roots a child in self-confidence as the experience throughout his or her development has reaffirmed the child is worth being cared for. In turn, this assurance provides an established base for them to practice independence and exploration. In early years, this can translate to confidence in schools and successful relationships, building good relationships with teachers and your peers. In older children, this can even correlate to stronger school performance, goal orientation, and the ability to work and cooperate successfully with other children. Let's look at the effects of an insecure attachment, okay? Insecure attachment can impact childhood development, causing effects that can continue into adulthood. While one can imply that opposite behaviors may occur in a case where an insecure attachment has been formed, there was a project, okay, a scholar interviewed 10 mental health clinicians and found insecure attachment could also spur a significant number of negative outcomes that manifest in early adulthood and often lingers into adulthood. Now, this included poor social and problem-solving skills, poor coping skills, increased tantrums, clingy and withdrawn behavior, aggression, 
one critical aspect of a child's relationship with the caregiver is the way emotional relationships are modeled. Instead of exhibiting social skills or emotional regulation, children with insecure attachments may strive to capture attention with distorted behavior or hide distress altogether because you keep discouraging them to show emotion. So this type of masking or internalization can trigger depression, anxiety, and psychopathy in some cases as early as preschool and can pave the path for an adolescence plagued by low self-esteem exclusion and social rejection that can create a vicious cycle it never ends now while serious insecure attachment does not have to distort childhood and adolescent development permanently professionals can support interventions that can transform poor patterns and partner with families to support a change by educating both the child and caregivers to improve their relationships with time Professionals can also strive to drive change at a broader, a broader level by establishing educational programs for new parents and creating community awareness around the influence that attachment has on overall childhood development. Please turn on your notification button so that you don't miss my next video on how our attachment styles do affect our adult relationships. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.